for me, I just, I, I feel very, uh, very blessed and I am very grateful that I have, I was exposed, uh, you know, and introduced to the most ancient art science on planet earth, astrology in the, in the 1970s. So it has been over 40 years now that I have been correlating observation and correlation as above, so below, as without, so within. If there's anything that I have learned over these 40 years of counseling people, of watching uh, the events in the you know, celestial sphere, and then seeing how they correlate and respond and reflect, you know, it's, it's not cause and effect. I want to say right away, the planets are not doing anything to us. We live in like a holographic universe. It's more like, a, you know, reflection. Yes, so this is a, is a reflection. It's, it's beyond Newtonian physics of cause and effect. It's more about quantum, the quantum field. And the field reflects different aspects and elements within the field. So looking at this over this long period of time, okay, and observing as much as I have, it has really brought me into a great deeper understanding that there are no accidents and that there are no coincidences and that there is deep unconscious forces, okay, personal unconscious and collective unconscious, spiritual, however you want to label or name these spiritual forces, these unconscious soul forces that really are always acting for us, with us, for our evolutionary growth. And they cause at times what we may, what appears as accidents, <laughs> coincidences, and creates, uh, you know, uncertainty because our little conscious mind of the ego it's only 10 percent of the mass of our brain okay is conscious it is not able to see it's like the tip of the iceberg with 90 percent of us of our consciousness is unconscious we have this little bit so we just don't see it and we call that chaos and we you know we it is unexplainable and it is yeah, undeterminable. But the thing is, what? Hindsight is twenty twenty. If you look back at just one small little decision in your life a couple years ago or a couple days ago, you would not be sitting here right now listening to me talk. <laughs> that is how precise everything that you have ever thought done or all the actions that you have performed have led you right here to this moment in your life and we can see this as we as we turn around and we look back when we are looking forward into the future this is this is where right we we cannot see what i like about astrology I consider that it shows us, it does not get so specific, okay? But what I sense is that it gives, it says there is a wave coming and we're all surfers and we're all sitting on our surfboards and, you know, and it's like, okay, here comes Pluto, okay? Here comes Saturn, here comes, you know, this way. And, and it's like, okay, now the time is to lay down and paddle. Now the time is to stand up, you know, and it's, and so we are free surfers. We can fall, we can wipe out, we can practice, get really good. I'm sure in New Zealand, you do a lot of surfing down there. <laughs> anyway, so this, you know, this, you know, this time, timing, the timing really is something that we want to look at in terms of action also. Yes, because action, there is a time and a season for everything. 
And, and action is what? It's very masculine. It is about doing. And the feminine or the yin energy is about being. There is a time to be and a time to do. There is a time to inhale. There is a time to exhale. There is nighttime and there is daytime. I mean, we can go you know, on and on very, you know, very much so with this whole yin, yang, masculine, feminine, acting and being polarity. And, and this is what we are really working with collectively right now. Right now, astrology tells us, okay, that, and, and even last year and years before, astrologers have looked at the year of 2020. Acting and being. I'm kind of hearing myself there for a second. So we have seen this wave coming for a long time. I mean, it was even last year that I, you know, I dubbed 2020. Back, at, uh, it was a year ago, I said, 2020 is the year of alchemical transformation from death to resurrection. I did not know how accurately that was going to play out in terms of actual physical life and death. I was speaking more metaphorically of death and resurrection as a descent into the dark, the unknown, the uncertain, but that always leads us into the resurrection. Because one thing that, you know, astrology shows us, and not just astrology, astrology is, like I say, it's just life. But all growth and all evolution occurs through cycles. Whether it is a minute, an hour, a day from sunrise to sunset, a year from winter, spring, summer, and fall back to winter, spring, summer, and fall, uh, a human life span, okay, is, it's, it's another cycle. And uh, we can go on and on and on. So astrology is the study of cycles and how these cycles all interact and connect and form like a Swiss watch. So we have, you know, seven year cycles that having to do with Saturn and Uranus. We have a 12 year cycle with Jupiter. We have an 18.6 year cycle with the moon's nodes. We have the yearly cycle with the sun. We have a, a lifespan. Uranus is 84 to 85 years. And then we even go beyond. Neptune is 165. Pluto is 248. <laughs> now that, you know, now they have Eris, okay, is 1500. <laughs> so, I mean, it, you know, it goes, you know, very, very many, many, many different cycles. And of course, these can also be broken down into phases, but I'm not going to go there right now <laughs> with phases. But so I just say that there are these cycles coming. And when we look at these cycles, there's times when they co when they commingle, okay. And when they commingle, like they are in the year of 2020, the astrologers know, oh boy, what we have is we have the cycle of Pluto, which goes around every 248 years, and then we have the cycle of Saturn that goes around every 28 years, and then we have the cycle of Jupiter, which goes around every 12 years. And we have all three coming together within a few degrees in the sign of Capricorn, really for the first time since 1894 BC. It has been almost 4,000 years since we have had this tight orb stellium stellium is three or more planets in the same sign and just think okay right around december when the sun comes around and you know the mercury and venus there'll be a whole huge stellium there 
And if I have enough time, I will actually pull out the charts towards the end of, uh, towards the end of this talk and, and show you what is going on. But I just want to say that this heralds the end of a very huge, long, old cycle that will naturally give birth, give way to a new cycle. And when you have this transitional time, just think of your life, okay? Think of the birth of a baby. Uh, think of, uh, you know, with the big life changes that you have in your life. Maybe you got married, okay? Uh, maybe when you graduated from university, Okay, you know, the, the, you know, and, and then, you know, as you get older, maybe it's, a, it's an illness, maybe it's, a, you know, a virus, right, where you get, you know, you go through these transformative times. And of course, death is one of these times. You could get divorced, okay, you could move houses or change countries. You know, they have this, I think it's, you know, the 10 most stressful, you know, changes in your life. You know, they have them numbered. <laughs> and, uh, and if you look at this, every single one of them is super stressful and completely full of potential. And it is a transition from the known, familiar, and secure into a new expression of yourself, a new understanding, new capacities, new creative manifestations. So we are collectively, the whole planet Earth, all of humanity is now going through what I've, li I've likened it to a birth canal. We are in the birth canal of a new age. And it's not only a new age. In astrology, we have ages. They last exactly uh, closer to 2,160 years. Roughly they're 2,000 years due to the precession of the equinoxes. But even beyond this age, moving from the age of Pisces to the age of Aquarius, which I'm sure you're very familiar with, we have the movement from the patriarchy. The patriarchy has been in existence for 6,500 years. This is older than the Bible, okay? This is older than Gilgamesh. This is before writing. We're going back thousands and thousands of years, and it has been male dominated. And so let us look at what this male and female, and I don't want to get into gender or sex. We are both masculine and feminine. We are both yin and yang. We both receive and create. We are, we are beings that act. So let's not, I don't want to get into gender right here. I want to get into this idea of in and out and the past being more about externalization, about conquering, and the masculine has to do with daylight. The feminine has to do with the dark. Masculine has to do with outside. Feminine has to do with inside. We've been worshiping the sun for thousands of years, and now they find the center is really a black hole at the center of the galaxy. So we've even gone from the light of the sun <laughs> being the center to a black hole being the center. I mean, we are doing this whole shift. And so, you know, today's talk is about action, which is actually, okay, yes, this is action, but we are in a time of lockdown. It's, it's not, a, this is a time for inward reflection, okay, feminine feeling, emotion, connecting with, okay, you know, the unconscious, the inner realms of feeling, our past. The, uh, the masculine has to do with the future. The feminine has to do with the, with the past. We can look at all of these things. And we can look at our, you know, the masculine also has to do with, like I said, conquering. It has to do with wars. It has to do with materialism and money and the, exer you know, the exercising of power over others. 
And it's also the myself. It's my individual expression, my needs. Yeah, it is the process of individuation, of becoming I, me, my unique, original me. The feminine in the matriarchy was more about the community. Okay, it is more about the whole. And it is about softness. The masculine is hard and phallic. The feminine is soft and receptive. So we have thousands of years of conditioning of what is powerful, what is success and what is failure, what is going to win and what is going to lose. And there's, you know, been so much socio-cultural, religious conditioning that this masculine energy and this masculine expression is what life means what gives us a, an identity, what gives us a purpose. What is your purpose? My purpose is to win and to conquer and to get as much money and as much land and as much power and as much toys as I can before I die. <laughs> I mean, it's very, this is, you know, this is a very masculine, you know, externalization of myself into the third dimensional world. The feminine is about, okay, love union connection emotional connection nurturing guarding protecting the innocent the children child bearing the planet the waters and the sky and the plant and you know, the animals and just, i mean so we can see these are the issues that we are dealing with now we can even look at white and black black lives matter <laughs> black is feminine white is masculine if you want to get into the yin and yang symbol of black and white right there is this whole you know it's an emergence of okay and we have pedophilia we have the sexual you know uh, you know the, the the rapes and going on over and after i mean everything that is feminine is on the rise and 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 the masculine you know power structures and financial institutions and sh these are all being challenged very strongly right now so what i want to be what i want to be talking about is i, I want to be talking when it comes to action there are different expressions different manifestations different levels of action so what I want to be going through now is what is called the evolutionary stages. And these evolutionary stages, they're not just astrological. I think they're, you know, they were the basis of the caste system actually over in ancient India. And some of it's still going on today. But it was really the humanistic astrologer, the, the founder, father of humanistic astrology, Dane Rudyer, that brought forward these, these stages of evolutionary growth. And then they were de further developed by Jeffrey Wolf Green, who is the founder of evolutionary astrology. And I've thrown in a few things of my own, but I'm going to show you this model. And this model I want to discuss a little bit because it has to do with reincarnation. And, you know, some of us, you know, are going to be, you know, there, but we're just going to say the, the Buddhists have the six different realms. Okay, you can come from the hungry ghosts <laughs> or the human realm, the animal realm, uh, the demons realm, the hell or the heavenly realms. There's these six different worlds that the Buddhists have. You know, uh, the anthroposophists, okay, we'll just say like, okay, we, you know, we're coming up, you know, from the plant to the animal, to the human, to the angelic, to the archangelic, to the, you know, uh, you know, others will say we're coming from, you know, 13 dimensions the physicists are now saying there are 13 dimensions and we come down into this physical time space body of three dimensions others will say we're coming from other galaxies the andromeda galaxy and we've just stopped into the milky way so you know others have parallel universes but one way or the other astrology says that when we take our first breath they call it prana in east india yeah prana is spirit when we draw in the spirit when we draw in the breath 
and they cut the umbilical cord, this is the moment of your birth chart. And it says that there was a soul spirit intention to be born from those parents with that DNA, with that gender, with that religion, with that much money, with that, uh, that much health or ill health. But, I mean, it's like some things have been chosen unconsciously for sure, possibly with the help of other spirit beings that, that sets the tone and gives a purpose and an intention for this life experience. So this takes a, this, this gives us a certain, a little bit of a certainty that when we just look at the original birth chart, but then we can also say that we have gone through many of these lives and many of these lives, I like to call it the school of planet earth. So we have different evolutionary stages and we can spend 10, 20, 30 lives in each one of these stages. We can get stuck in a stage. We can want to like, just like shoot on through. We can, da, da, da. but you, this is the, basically the stages that I'm going to share my screen now. And I'm going to, you know, kind of walk you through some of these stages. Okay, here we are. There's three basic stages. Is that good? What one did I do? Yeah, that should be full screen. Yeah. Is that it? Yeah. So you can see these arrows down at the bottom is where we kind of come in. We kind of come in from other dimensional realms or the animal realm or wherever you want to say, but three quarters, 75%, okay, of the world, of any given population is in what we call the consensus stage. And this relies upon external authority. We just want to learn. I, I, I say that, you know, stage one here is like workers, managers, owners. This is, so three quarters of the population is looking, okay, to presidents or popes or millionaires or movie stars. They're looking to external authority figures, starting even with mom and dad. Okay, or their boss at work, or the manager of Starbucks, or whoever is there, you know, you know, whoever is above them. We so we kind of just kind of start out in this physical realm of Saturn that is very much about the conscious ego. Yes. And so these are the people that are working their way up. And, you know, after 10, 20 lives, you, you, you know, you've got how to make your bread and butter and you've got, you know, and you become a manager and you get a fancy car and a bigger house and, you know, nicer clothes, you know, and then finally you become a lawyer or a doctor or a president or a cardinal in the church or, you know, a, a CEO of a corporation and you reach this kind of a pinnacle place. But this is, you know, this is dealing with these are the people when it comes to action. These are the people that are going to be demonstrating, okay? They're going to physically get out in the street. <laughs> they are going to, you know, want to make physical changes and, you know, and, you know, financial and money and appearances and possessions. And, you know, and this is just like, you know, it, you know, many, many, you could do a hundred lifetimes, Think of how long that is and how many experiences we have in our sub, sub, subconscious. Because this is just the realm of the conscious ego, that tip of the iceberg that I spoke about. These people are spending, this is daytime consciousness. Yeah. And eventually, after so many lifetimes, you hit the peak. Well, and, well, let's also look at this because in this physical, you know, uh, you know, stage one of the consensus, the consensus is also very much attuned to what is going on now. Not so much the past, not so much the future, 
you know, it's the what's in the newspaper, what's on the news, you know, who's got the most money now, who's got the most influence, what's right in front of my nose, I'm just, you know, I'm making it through the week or through the month, I just want to pay the rent, or I just wanted to, you know, it's, it's very much, you know, about the current, so right now, this is, you know, science, you know, well, it used to be science, now, uh, you know, certain politicians are poo-pooing science <laughs> so it's not even science anymore now it's just billionaires <laughs> i think money talks the billionaires are now the authorities on planet earth <laughs> you know but anyway it could be military authorities it could be religious authorities but anyway you know they look up to these authorities to be guided these are the people who vote Okay, right, your election, 75%, you know, the population is out there. Okay, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to cast my vote or whatever, and I'm in the system. You're probably not listening to me right now. <laughs> there, are, there are very few consensus people that, you know, obviously astrology is not consensus. Okay, it's looked at as superstitious at the best or just bullshit at the worst. Okay, but you know, so, you know, we're, I, I doubt that anybody listening to me right now is, you know, in this stage, but let's just, you know, after so many lifetimes, you hit this point where, you know, the pharmaceutical companies cannot heal your wife's cancer, okay, where the psychology of today does not understand your schizophrenic son, where, you know, you've, you know, you reach an existential, you know, where, you know, the, the priest that you trusted molested your child, I, you know, I mean, you, you, where these authorities fall, the system lets you down. The current day understanding of reality is insufficient to meet a soul need. And that will cause a breakdown and a life where you break free. This is then you move into the second stage where you want to individuate. And it's not external authority anymore. Now it is personal authority and intellectual authority. I will be my own boss. I will make my own rules. I will revolt. I will rebel. Okay, nobody's going to tell me what to do. The, the, the first stage of the individuated is marked by anger. The Unabomber, I think of, yes? This is the rebel that wants to blow up the system that let them down. A lot of these people, you don't see them anywhere. They're out in the woods. They're out in the mountains. They don't have cell phones. They're outside the system. They're breaking free, breaking out, growing their own food off grid. Leave me alone. <laughs> they are going into their personal unconscious. The personal unconscious holds within it all of your personal genius and your personal potential. This is the planet Uranus that I associate with this 20%. And after a few lifetimes of anger and rebellion, you actually what? You start to develop your capacities, your talents, okay? And you start to develop your intellect. You become more autonomous. You become more of an entrepreneur. You take care of yourself. You're kind of outside the system and outside the box. You become more of an artist or, you know, it's just like, you know, and you develop your own genius. You reach this stage three and maybe you're Bill Gates or Elon Musk or, you know, Einstein or, you know, uh, Da Vinci or Beethoven. You're a genius. You're Picasso, you're, you know, you're an artist, okay? I mean, this is, you know, you are profound in your field and in your understanding. And yet it is this intellectual. And there comes a point, okay, where you are so great and you are so powerful and you're still discontent. There's still something more. There's still something beyond. But before I move on to what is, you know, beyond, let's look at the type of activity, right? This is, so in these times of uncertainty, we're going to have these, you know, certain people are, are called, okay? And you're going to, you know, and, and you may, you know, you may hear the call, 
you know, you know, come out, you know, come out to the rebellion, come out to the, you know, you know, this, you know, get physically active and involved or, and, and that, or these will be the people that maybe, uh, you know, are on these webinars or they're, you know, they're, you know, they're setting up, you know, uh, the, the new earth project, right. You know, we can think of, you know, uh, you know, Eisenstein, you know, the philosophers or, you know, uh, you know, uh, Gray, you know, the artists that, you know, I mean, this is just like, you know, really coming in, right? You know, Dan, Daniel Pinchbeck, right? I, these are, let's, they've got the ideas. Let's do something new. Let's do something different. This is the new age. What is the future about? Uranus, you know, is associated with the future and the third eye. Let us open our third eye and become visionaries yes <laughs> you know i mean it's awesome baby <laughs> yeah and then you know and then, and then at some point at some point there's something outside the mind outside the mind i say you jump from the head to the heart you jump from the mind to love from the intellect to the spirit and you bow down, you become a Hare Krishna, <laughs> yeah, and you just want to meditate, and you, you kind of, you know, you let go of all this power and knowledge and knowing, and, and you just want to simplify, and you want to just go sit in an ashram, or let go of everything, and maybe just grow your own vegetables, or, you know, you just want to meditate, or play your guitar all day, or paint all day, I mean, but, you know, it's really about tapping into what we call the collective unconscious and this is the subtle world of reiki the subtle spiritual energy the extrasensory perception that perceives beyond the individual personal intellectual into the whole Okay, and, you know, and, and this is also, you know, it can be, you know, a shortcut, maybe might be some, you know, mushrooms or, you, you know, uh, LSD or, you know, whatever. So we have, you know, people that break through, that open this crown chakra, go outside of time and space, outside of the individual ego. And they spend lives as disciples or lives as, you know, just like really, you know, penetrating and understanding more and more the mysteries of life and, you know, and stepping into this, you know, beyond the third dimension, right? Into the multidimensional realities. Stage two is they become teachers. They become gurus. Okay, you know, Osho, or, you know, you, know you, you become more of this master. Okay, you know, there's Gandhi, or Nelson Mandela, or Martin Luther King, or, you know, I mean, you, you know, you become, you know, even Aleister Crowley, or whatever. But, you know, it's, it's like, you know, I could go on and on with names, but, you know, you can kind of get this sense that, you know, you move from being the disciple to being the guru. And then finally, psh, you, you know, you reach Christ consciousness. You reach Buddha, Atman, okay? You know, and then I've got this little boop. <laughs> Made some arrows going out the top. It's like, you know what? You don't have to come back. <laughs> you're gone. Yeah, you're gone. You've reached, you know, you, you've reached the peak. You've graduated from the school of planet Earth. And so what is the activity? Activity of the spiritual Okay, and, and, and to me, this the activity is to be teaching and bringing the spiritual feeds. Okay, Neptune feeds Uranus. The spirit feeds the genius within each and every single one of us. You know, and it, and it, there's always this pull towards going up or expanding. Or I mean, it's not even up, okay? I was going to say, you know, you could turn this whole thing upside down, okay? And it could be a funnel right, where we all are coming down <laughs> and going out the bottom. It doesn't really, you know, it's not, a, it's not about up and down, really, okay? It's, it is more about, but I, I will say that, you know, these geniuses, right, you know, like Einstein is, you know, these things trickle down. It all trickles down from the individuated genius down into generations later, 
okay you know it you know it gets brought into play okay you know and you know nuclear powers you know you know uh, you know now realized right you know after you know and and of course as you know as the spiritual you know teachers uh, you know open us up to multi-dimensional realms and realities okay they inspire and open you know new discoveries about the nature of what it means to be human so and of course this first stage spiritual this can also be what healers shamans right doing ceremony doing ritual out in the mountains you know and 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 affecting change within the whole collective unconscious and when each one of us does our personal work it affects the entire it reverberates like throwing a rock into the pond okay you know all the ripple the ripple effect and and it's and that's why i think in the bible or other places it says it only takes 144,000 awakened enlightened beings to transform the entire planet well, this is, you know, this is not 144,000, you know, of uh, Saturn conscious ego, <laughs> folks, okay? This is 144,000 of, you know, some old souls. We could say, you know, these are just kind of young souls and old souls. And I don't really like to get into the, you know, this place of better or worse or, you know, this, that, and the other thing. And, but, you know, so here we all are. And I just wanted to also say that in this realm of, 75% of the world's population in the consensus realm is living in tremendous amounts of uncertainty because they, their reality exists with the temporal, temporary, material, physical world. And when you get into, you know, money and possessions and your age and your appearance and your job and all these temporary temporary conditions are what change more rapidly than our soul nature our intellectual our you know our inner world okay you know and and, and so as we move up this kind of pyramid kind of a scheme here you know um, things actually when you come and you and you are up here you know and you're doing your meditations and you're leaving your body and you're astral projecting and you're envisioning okay and you're sending love out to every being on the planet and you're connecting you know psychically and spiritually you know through this neptune okay you know universal oneness there's far more certainty and you are not so shaken because your identity is more you are more identified with your eternal soul spirit than you are with your physical or intellectual body or mind and so you know the, even the levels of uncertainty okay also change as we evolve through these different lifetimes so i just wanted to really bring you know uh, bring this in a, a, a little bit for us to consider for us to think about i'm going to stop sharing that uh, screen and Thank come you. back to you wow it got dark while i was talking what is this <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what i mean by coast to oh geez yeah well last that, that, was that, that was that was super interesting um and i'm just wondering if someone is has a realization they realize that they're sitting in that bottom was it 75 percent um and wants to do something about it or wants to um start to move through their own stages of consciousness and you know apart from probably studying astrology which sounds like it would be super helpful too what kind of things do you suggest that someone might start to look at or consider if they're kind of in this stage of here i am not feeling totally comfortable with it where do i go from here mm. 
and that's where I had the whole second part of my talk, which has to do, <laughs> has to do you know, with your individual birth chart. And that's the thing. You know, there's almost 8 billion people on planet Earth. There are 8 billion different intentions, you know, and even one life can have multiple intentions. So we have, we have a soul spiritual intention. And, and then even within that, we have life stages. When you're 7, 14, 21, 28, 35, 42, 49, 56, there's different, you know, different actions to be taken even at these different stages. So I really wanted to, you know, kind of bring this in, and, you know, that it is such a very, very individual, unique. And the other thing is, you know what, you, you don't jump from consensus to spiritual you don't jump from stage one of you know into this like i said it takes lifetimes and so you know those you know it's like a, a child you know going through puberty or you know you know going through high school or it's like you go step by step by step and it's not a one size fits all. I really wanted to, you know, if it's one thing I want everyone to go away with from this talk is that, you know, it really is incumbent upon each one of us right now to go within and really through meditation, I use Kundalini Yoga, I use Pranayama. Okay, there are, you know, there's all kinds of techniques. It can be anything from jogging to painting to singing, but you know, it's tapping into your own unique personal vibration and trusting yourself. And be and 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 you know, in, in a way, kind of I want to just like really encourage people more and more to become their own authorities and as you trust yourself and as you listen inwardly there is what we call the still small voice within <laughs> you know they used to call it the conscience <laughs> okay whatever you want to call it okay <laughs> you know, it is your you know it's uranus it is your personal unconscious and i encourage everyone to what Stop thinking. Thinking. We think our mind makes plus minus good, bad, right, wrong, black, white, like a transistor, like a square wave, ones and zeros. We make our, 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 our thoughts and we do like a thousand a second. Our brain makes these. And so we, you know, as long as we are thinking, we are in the third dimensional polarized ego world and this is why meditation is about stilling your mind controlling your thought processes relaxation i use sound technology and chanting and breathing and all kinds of things to shh. it's my favorite mantra shh. just shut up shut your mind down and when you do and it's some people it takes months weeks months years to stop thinking but you actually step into your observer your witness to where you observe yourself thinking and you become the thought thinking itself and when you still that mind you will find this is your intuition this is your spirit talking this is your heart talking this is eternity you know eternity speaking with you through you you become more of an instrument okay of something much greater than that ego that is seeking okay uh, self fulfillment and you and you begin yes you know to to you know to act differently in the world it's almost i i love ecstatic dancing where you let the music move you 
Instead of you moving yourself, you allow yourself to be moved by the music. And that's like, so, you know, if you don't want to meditate, <laughs> try ecstatic dancing, baby, you know? But yeah, there's all kinds of ways. I, I think, you know, uh, jogging, you know, exercise, you know, like surfing, when you are really, they, even the sports people, they call it in the zone. There's a time and space where you, they call it in the zone, where you're in the zone where time and space kind of cease to exist. They've talked to basketball players, you know, where it's just like, you know, they just like become one with the basket, or it's just like they know that that ball's going through the hoop. Uh, it, it, it's not even, it, it's when you're in the zone, okay? There's, you know, that's, that, that's, that, that's a beautiful place to be. <laughs> so, yes. And, and so the other thing that I would say is, you know, using astrology is another, is another way. Because this Pluto-Jupiter-Saturn conjunction is falling in a unique, different place. They're called 12 houses. They're 12 what we call fields of human experience. And so you want to really act, okay, you know, in alignment, okay, you know, with, okay, where is this, you know, grand conjunction occurring in your personal birth chart? Is it in the first house, okay, of self? Is it in the sixth house of health? Is it, you know, you know, in the 10th house, you know, of, you know, uh, work out in the world and career? And is it in the eighth house of interpersonal, you know, emotional, sexual union and, you know, going into the, you know, psychology? So there's all these different, you know, ways that astrology offers us to see not only our, our life purpose and intention coming into this life, but also the, you know, the particular cycles of unfoldment. Saturn is the principle of contraction. Where are we contracting? Jupiter is the principle of expansion. Where is it time now for us to expand? So, the, you, know, you know, we can really, you know, benefit, you know, very, you know, very, very deeply, greatly from looking at our chart. I mean, I was going to share some charts. Uh, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I've still got a few minutes left. Let me share my screen once. And, and just, uh, let's see if we can uh, do this. And while the screen's coming up, I just wanted to remind people who are tuning in that if they wanted to ask a question, you can head down to the Q&A icon at the bottom of your screen. And um, you can type in your question there. And if you do want to um, ask your question personally yourself. Let us know and we can bring you in. <clears throat> Thank you. So this is like a, this is called the natural wheel. Okay. It's, it is a, it's hypothetical, but it does show the relationship between, this is called the first house, Aries. Okay. And it is cardinal fire. There's four elements, fire, earth, air, and water. Fire and air are masculine, earth and water are feminine, and you know, so you know, that's a that's a good start. So you have this birth chart, and you can see where was the sun, but not just the sun. I don't work with sun sign astrology, okay? That's so basic. <laughs> we have to look at all, you have to look at the whole, you have to look at the whole, take everything into account. Not only where the sun is, but where is the moon and where's Venus and Mercury and Pluto. And so, you know, so you, know, you can see your overall, you know, it, you know, it's are, are you inception, formation, education, foundation, okay, you know, creative expression, work, modification and health relationship and partnership. Okay, you know, you know, deep transformation. Uh, you know, this is philosophy, the, the, you know, this is the higher mind and the lower mind, okay? You know, the, the, this is, 
maturation and order and government and law okay uh, you know and then we you know we 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 go beyond in this aquarius we're coming in this age of aquarius of envisioning and observing from outside the box rebelling and you know just uh, you know bringing in a new paradigm a new reality and then finally pisces is the 12th house it is you know surrendering completing you can see kind of see these ages I've kind of tied them in with kind of a little bit of a human life cycle, but you know, this is just kind of one way to, you know, see and, uh, you know, envision some of this, right? So you can look at your natal birth chart and last but not least, I will go for just a few moments of what, who, Donald Trump. <laughs> You can see here, okay, that, you know, Donald Trump has what, you know, you know, his son is in that 10th house. I order. Did you, did you see that? Right. You know, I order. He was born on an eclipse, right? The sun opposite the moon. The, you know, this is a lunar eclipse when they are near the, the, the nodes. And you can see now this, this is the outside circle is where everything is now. So we have today is the is the new moon close to the node. So this is a solar eclipse, the new moon. And here's this Jupiter, Saturn, Pluto conjunction that I was talking about it. Now I'm gonna go back a few months, right? And if we go back months, we can see that this whole, you know, this whole Jupiter Saturn has been playing around in, you know, Trump's fifth house of the stage self-expression uh you know the lion tamer ruled by leo this fifth house of i you know i am original and unique and listen to me and see me and da, 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 da. and we can see coming up that this is changing and if we just look past the you know just look into november and december okay we can see that well, I, I say he's going to lose the election, <laughs> but you know, uh, we can see basically look at Pluto, Shiva, Kali, the destroyer in opposition to his Saturn Venus conjunction, right? Okay, this is once in a lifetime. Pluto was here when he was born. It's only gone from there around to here in his entire life. Okay, and you know, Jupiter and Saturn have been through his, they're moving into his house of health. I'm a little concerned about his health, actually. But you know, we go from being the top dog and the top of the pyramid, uh, the sixth house in Virgo has to do with learning humility. So this is you know, going to be a very, you know, there's, you know, we can see some changes going on here. And, and so this is where, okay, you know, his action, uncertainty into action right okay you know it's been yang fire masculine fifth house it's moving into earth virgo feminine personal health mm -hmm.